To me, I don't know about physics, it's that it just teaches you how to describe the world around you. Like one time I just was staring at a pot of boiling water for some reason. By the time I was 16, there was no longer any question. Physics was it. If you resonate to physics, you resonate hard. It's like nothing else. And I was just like, this is fascinating. I worked on the Betatron, and that determined the rest of my life. I started getting answers to the questions that I had asked and could not get answers to. But once I got linked to quantum mechanics, it was hopeless. I was just sucked in. Biology is living stuff. Geology is rocks. We do everything. One of the best things I can say about physics is the kind of community that it creates. If you'd asked me my 15 best friends, 10 of them would have been my graduate students. This year, I'm working on superconductors. Experiments that I was doing with Robbie led to his Nobel Prize. What my research is doing is studying how these things called vortices, which develop in superconductors, how they move. Young physicists bring good young ideas to a field. Maybe you can devise an experiment that's uh, in real time. Because we see that the, the higher frequency argument feature goes down as yeah. we increase temperature. Yeah, yeah. Why is physics important? Because it's the basic discipline. Suddenly I could see everything in a totally different way and it, I just kind of stuck with it. I like big, big equipment, big machines, big lasers, space, uh, spacecraft, big optics. Uh, I love big optics, uh, big telescopes. And that's part of the fun of, of physics. One of the wonderful opportunities working at physics today has been to get to know the luminaries in physics, who we all admire, and to determine the directions of physics. Phil Anderson, the top condensed matter theorist of his generation. Murray Gell-Mann, who invented quarks. Leo Kadanoff, the behavior of critical phenomena. Hans Bethe, physicist, physicist. I've been very fortunate to be at AIP as we come to the 75th anniversary of the organization. Richard Feynman, particle theorist and showman. Val Telegdi, experimenter extraordinary. And Charles Towns, who invented the laser. I arrived at Princeton as a graduate student in physics in January of 1932. That was just after the committee had decided to create the American Institute of Physics. In retrospect, it was a brilliant creation for many, many reasons. First, it brought together all the member societies. That was the purpose. Second, they were able to have one central publishing outfit. In the 20s, Germany was the center of science. In the 30s is when American science really started blossoming. And then, of course, the big catastrophe came. Many of the other members went either to Radar at MIT or to Los Alamos. And after the war, AIP had a role in defining what was the new role of science after the great success that physics had in serving the war effort. The concept was discussed time and time again of a unifying publication. Finally, in 1948, Physics Today was created. Of course, science is a totally international affair. AIP started translating cover to cover Russian journals. Very often it takes time to recognize the giants. It's important to tell their stories while people are still alive. And this is one of the roles of the History Center at the American Institute of Physics. The implications of the publishing program was the need for more space. And then the other thing that happened was once we started publishing this material fast, scientists then started to send us their manuscripts. The decision was finally made to have a building in Washington, D.C. And I think that decision has been a marvelous thing for those member societies that are together in that building and with the 
closer connection they have to several other the member societies in Washington, D.C. The important thing about 1993 was browsers changed the world. We put our material on the web early as soon as people wanted to find it on the web. The process by which science advances is quite complicated. Publications play an extremely important role in any scientific enterprise. In addition to our own publications, we provide publishing services to 25 plus scientific societies, 100 to 150 publications. Society journals reach more people, are more widely read, more widely cited, and cost less for the library. The American Institute of Physics is an umbrella organization which provides services, not just publishing. AIP is part of the infrastructure of physics. All of our member societies are our customers. We have the largest amount of data about physics education and how many PhDs and master's degrees have been awarded back 40 or 50 years. We have a career network which helps physicists find jobs. AIP has corporate associates like Xerox, Ford Motor Company, and General Motors. One aspect of, uh, of AIP's effort to uh, inform and influence is uh, the program of fellows. A fellowship in the State Department. Or in offices of members of Congress. Where you've got to have good, sound knowledge in order to have good, sound policies. And that's a big role for AIP, to inform the world. We produce something called physics success stories. Two pages, front and back. Great graphics that a scientist can leave behind. Brief, but very dramatic. We have syndicated 90-second news pieces that go out to various stations across the country. Presentation of the things that physics has contributed to society, to government, to industry. We try to get information about what policymakers are doing back to the member society. One type of news bulletin that I enjoy myself is it's called For Your Information. And many policymakers subscribe. We help reporters understand science so they can translate it into ways that the general public understand. We work with students with 700 SPS chapters around the country. Our SPS chapter really focuses on promoting the community around physics. Uh, doing large public physics demonstrations. AIP is also doing really good, I think, by publishing that graduate school book. Every generation, apparently, has to be taught again why science is important. AIP is committed to diversity. When you don't see someone that looks like you, you're like, well, maybe there's no place for me. The field is changing a lot, and a lot more women are getting into it. My ultimate goal, which is to become an astronaut one day. Everybody Literally. should reach for the stars. Not only am I a woman, but I am black, and I want to see more people just thinking that they can do things like this, because everyone can. Our Center for the History of Physics has been really a, a lighthouse. AIP's role is to see that the history of physics is conserved and is accessible. An interesting question to ask is if there were no AIP, would there be a reason to create it in 2006? There are things that AIP does that no society does that are tremendously important. The Physics Today magazine is one good example. The History Center, the statistics program, the educational programs. Well, it's developed a solid community across all physics borders. It's also tied in applied physics with basic physics. AIP, if it didn't exist, would have to be recreated again.